so leaving off from where we left off, uh, starting again from where we left off. So this is what we looked at in the previous video, where you specified the CSS rules in the head of the HTML document. Okay, if you need to review this, please uh, visit the previous CSS video. Okay, now just going over some of the points I probably need to, need to mention. Um, if we go back to the code here, you notice it says style type equals text slash CSS on line 11. Okay, that's essentially to let the browser know that what's following is CSS rules. Okay. Um, and these are the various different types of files that you can specify. Okay, when we get to JavaScripting, you will be saying text slash JavaScript. Okay, now uh, font weight. This was one of the attributes mentioned in the CSS that we looked at that refers to how bold you want it. So you can actually specify bold, normal, bolder, lighter. You can also specify it in in, in, in terms of numbers, multiples of 100, from 100 to 900, okay? And so normal is considered to be around 400, so bold would be around 700, okay? We already talked about style classes, so again, if you need a refresher on what a class is, please refer to the previous video, okay? Font family is the property or the attribute where you can specify the type of font to use okay and these are the various examples of generic font families and specific fonts within those families that you can specify font size again can be specified either relative using relative values or absolute values so you can actually say xx small x small small smaller medium larger or you can actually specify specific numbers, right? Now, but rel relative font size values are preferred because um, your web page may be uh, viewed using all kinds of displays, right? And the sizes could vary. So you probably want to use relative measures rather than absolute measures because that's more flexible, okay? Um, let's see. Um, well, conflicting styles, right? Now, styles may be specified by a user, an author, or a user agent. Now, what does that mean? Okay, the user agent is your browser. Okay, so your browser can specify uh, rules. Okay, the author is the person who's actually creating the HTML page which, with the CSS rules. Okay, and the user is basically um, the person who's using the uh, is person who's using the um, uh, web page. Okay, so now since styles can come from various uh, sources like users, authors, user agents, uh, the styles cascade or they flow together, and sometimes there may be styles that conflict, and so some have to take precedence over others. Okay, so the browser has some default CSS rules, but the styles defined by the authors or the programmers take precedence over the styles defined by the users. Okay, a user style sheet is a style sheet that's on the customer's computer. So you can create your own style sheet and upload it into your browser and it affects the pages that the person browses with that computer. An author style sheet is what's been created by the web programmer. Okay, and it affects only the pages that use those CSS rules. Okay, now if you add an exclamation mark important to, th to the end of the style, then that will take precedence. Um, so that, so that if, you, if you were to add it, say, on, in the author-defined style sheet, it'll take precedence over the user-defined style sheet. So uh, this is just something to keep in mind. Um, in, as far as your project is concerned, you'll probably be creating one or more US CSS files. And um, so you really don't have to worry about the user agent and the user at this point in time. So just make sure that you at least are aware that these three sources of CSS rules exist. Okay? And also, uh, styles uh, defined for parent elements are inherited by the children. What we mean by that, for instance, is, um, let me see if there's an example that I can show you over here. Okay, so let's see. So here you have, um, with on line number 10, you have uh, the 
HTML tag body, right? And you specify font family, Arial, Helvetica, sans serif, right? If you look at this, uh, the, uh, if you look at the HTML itself, now within body, you have a whole bunch of HTML going on in there. Those are all the child or the children tags of body, okay? Now, since we have a rule for body, those are, those are automatically inherited by the child tags. Unless if the child tag has a rule that's in conflict with the parent tag, then the child tag wins. So just like in real life. So um, children always win. So just remember that. All right. So um, going back here again. Okay. So most styles defined for parent elements are also inherited by child or the nested elements. Okay. Now, uh, there's another attribute called text decoration and the values uh, that it can take on are things like underline, overline, line through, blink. Again, uh, this is uh, something you just need to be aware of so you know that this is available to you if you have to use that or want to use it in your coding. Okay. Now, um, this is more about conflicts over here. So, um, so looking at uh, bullet point... Uh, number one okay figure 4.3 that should be uh, sorry this one over here it's going back I don't like the fact that I'm having to scroll back and forth but this is 4.3 over here right so um, so over here if you look um, e EM has font weight bold color colon black right now if you look in here EM is embedded within the P tag, P, as, in, as on line number 31. And we've applied class equals special, right? Now, if you remember, class equals special. Special is a class and where the color is purple. So generally speaking, everything in this paragraph should be rendered purple in color. However, if you look at EM, which is a child tag of the P, of the P tag, the rule for that is color colon black. So guess which one will win here? The black one, right? Because uh, the rule for the specific, uh, the more specific tag or the more, uh, or the nested tag in this case, EM, is black. So that will take precedence over color being purple, which is for the paragraph whose class is special. Okay, I hope that was clear to you. And I'm going to stop it right here so you can review and um, digest this material.